see. I am the greatest combat athlete of all time. What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Tell the Tape. I am your host, Henry Cejudo, aka Triple C. And on this episode of Tell the Tape, I'm sorry to say, but I gotta do the Tell the Tape because more likely this fight may happen, even though I don't want it to happen. It's Sean O'Malley, the dirty Q tip versus Cheeto. Vera. I'm breaking this fight down to the key. And who is it that more likely to come out up top? Again, guys, this episode wouldn't be possible without our sponsors, Cookie Co. Whenever you guys want to indulge, you guys like cinnamon squirrel, you guys love cake, you guys love the whole night, you guys have a sweet tooth with all natural ingredients, you guys make sure to go to the local store near you. That's right, cookieco.com and get your munch on. Anyhow, guys, enough talk. Let's take it to the big screen. Okay, so here we have it, Sean O'Malley and Cheeto Vera. 17 and one, according to Sean O'Malley, he's still undefeated versus a veteran in Cheeto Vera with 21 wins and eight losses. And I think one draw, that's pretty, uh, those eight losses, that's crazy. Anyhow, to 12 KOs, to eight KOs, to one submission, to eight submission, 5'11", to 5'8". 72 inch reach to 75 to 70.5 age 28 to age 30. I mean other than the height these guys are pretty pretty even elsewhere you know because if you take a look at it, like Sean may be tall but he almost kind of for the size that he is he almost has T-Rex uh, arms but there's but there's one thing that I could see Cheeto that he does have ahead of Sean O'Malley and that's just the fact that he stopped him. If there's one area where I feel like Cheeto could could get him, it's right here. These submissions. I have eight submissions, guys, according to his record and all that. Even though he has eight losses, something about him and eight. I mean, he has the ability to submit these people. So that's what makes Cheeto uh, Cheeto dangerous. Yeah, he's he may be suspect with wrestling and all that other stuff, but when it comes to this fight, this fight to me for Cheeto is tailored made. I can't stand looking at the tattoo. Look, I mean, who's gonna write love? What's up with all these, with all this money that this dude has, and he's got like prison tattoos? I don't know where the six nine is. Somebody told me he's got, he's got a sixty nine tattoo. I mean, literally, man. There's a reason why I call Sean O'Malley the trans Barbie. But anyhow, let's take it to the tell the tape. For Sean O'Malley, his strengths. And again, guys, I am here to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. He does have good striking. He does he does know when is it that he's gonna kick or he's eventually gonna punch. But what makes all that striking really good, what really sets and what really triggers Sean O'Malley to, to have that good striking too, but to catch those shots, because there's times where he go in and he'll just shoot naked if he cross into his fight zone. And there's times where he uses his movements, his fakes, and fates. I will say this, man. This dude does, he does, boom, he's twitchy. There's a ba. And he, he, uh, uh, according to what is it that you're going to end up doing, Sean's going to end up eventually start kicking, throw hands, or just wait and watch, get you to react. Because the more you react with a guy like Sean Amari, the more he's going to eventually find his distance and his ability to set traps. You know, we saw it. What did he do with, what, do you, what, do you, what did he do with a guy like Aljamain Sterling? He cocked back a little bit. He saw him over aggressive, took a slight little step back to eventually see this man overreach to be able to time that shot, that right hand to eventually, you know, uh, uh, put this man on the ground. But again, he's precise. He is precise and I will give him that. He's, at least he's precise with the hands. I don't see much kicking from him. I don't, know how, I don't know how many people have really realized that. Like Sean doesn't kick unless if he's doing a teeth kick or whatnot, but he's, he's he doesn't really pull those weapons out. So he so when I say he's precise, he can be precise with the hands. Not not the not not the crazy power by like somebody like uh like let's say a Pedro Munoz if he or or, or so, somebody that's very like heavy handed at the bantamweight division, but it, 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 it but he is precise. He will find he will find the chin. He will find the side of your head, and he will do that. I don't see him go much to the body, but who knows? This, this may be some. This may, this may be a trick still up his sleeve to really discover more of Sean O'Malley. But let's get down to the. Let's get down to Sean O'Malley's weaknesses. The weakness number one to me, and is the durability, his threshold, 
him looking at the clock, him fighting three round fights, but yet he's looking at the clock. You know, he's been fed a lot of tomato cancer to his last two fights, but still there's a threshold. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I mean, granted, he did get that win over uh, over Aljamain Shung. I believe Aljamain Shung could continue to keep fighting 100%. 100%. He, you know, in the championship fight, dude, let this dude get beat up. Like, let him get some more hits. And if you guys watching in slow motion, uh, uh, Aljamain Shelly was just moving too much. He almost made it seem more dramatic than what it should have. But whatever. Things happen. But his number one weakness in my eyes is his threshold. His, his ability to take pain and his ability to have that gas tank to go for five rounds. Two, his composure. He'll demonstrate it. When he's hurt... You could see it. His demeanor will change. Like, he'll try to fake, but it's like a crazy fake. His legs will wobble. He shows it in his face. He'll look at the clock. His takedown defense. If a guy, if a guy like Peter Jan or, or was able to take him down that has no, necessarily no wrestling competition experience, I just feel like, yeah, I, I don't, I, I, sometimes I wonder where Aljo's mind was. You know, it's almost like he just didn't, he didn't really attempt to really go after a good takedown. I'm not, I'm not even sure if Alger was even there, but his takedown defense. And his last one, he's never gone five rounds. He has never gone five rounds with an elite fighter with, with, I, 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 I still, it sucks for me to say this, but I still don't see this guy as the best in the world. I don't, you know, you, you caught a, you lost the first round. You, it was an early stoppage in my eyes. I want to see this dude go through the ringer. I want to see, does he have the ability to go five rounds? Is he be prepared for that? Is, will he have the ability to actually take that pain for five damn rounds? And without further ado, let's get down to Hot Cheetos. To Cheeto Vera. <laughs> hey, look at this mustache. Come on, Cheeto. Cut that damn thing, dude. This mustache gotta go. Once you clean it up, dude, you you look more like a civilian, man. Like, you know what I mean? You choose to be a bad guy, dude. Like, don't, man. That's not you. I don't know you, but you're not one of them, dude. You know, like, like clean, like cut. somebody, somebody do me a favor and 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 cut this dude's mustache to where it looks clean, dude. Where you don't look like a freaking, you know, like one of those. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway, his strength, he's not a quitter. Cheeto Vera, he doesn't have quit in him. He will fight you to the very last round. He, he has that hope in him that he will somehow catch you with that kick as he's caught Frankie Yeager, catch you with that kick as he caught Dominic Cruz. And I think that's where, I think that's Cheeto's greatest, uh, his greatest asset is his durability, his, his, his willing to go to the very, very end, whether he loses or not, but he's going. Peaks in the later rounds and has comeback ability. We saw the fight, I just mentioned it. We saw the fight with Dominic Cruz. We saw the fight uh, with Frankie Edgar. He has the ability to actually pick up the fight, especially in a five round fight. Where I could see the waves turn if he does fight Sean O'Malley. Where I could see Cheeto just, you know, I could see maybe Sean, the beginning of, the beginning of, uh, 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 round one, the beginning of two, but going into, th going into three and on up, I think this is where Cheeto Vera could really bring him problems. And he's dangerous off his back. Again, I don't compliment this dude that much, but I will say this, you take him down, he will throw his elbows from his back and he will transition to a submission pretty slick. You know, so for as much shit as I do talk about Cheeto, you know, you do have to respect every opponent's game. You know, it's the reason why I'm at where I'm at. And it's the reason why a lot of these guys have never even won a belt. Let alone two. Let alone an Olympic gold medal. Anyhow, my favorite part. Let's get to his weaknesses. Starts the fight too late. Sometimes I wonder if Cheeto, like... He, he needs to get hit to kind of feel the fact that he's actually in the fight. But he starts the fight too late. You know, you, watch, you go back and you watch that Corey Sanhagen fight. Like, he didn't start fighting until maybe the last minute of round five. Like, you wonder where his freaking head is. You know, you wonder if the pressure and all the lights and, you know, fighting guys like me, like a, somebody that's willing to smack talk and do things like that. I wonder how much effect that it could have in this dude. 
So I, I would even go to the uh, to the route of psychologically. You know, in, in, in my eyes, Cheeto, you're not that fast. You have length, but you don't have twitch. And when you have twitch, we have boom. When you have pop, that's different. You could hit somebody, but it doesn't mean there's power or there's pop where you could finish them. You see what I'm saying? And sometimes I think he, he believes or he thinks he's better than what he really is. You know, it's crazy because more likely this dude's going to eventually, if he does fight Sean O'Malley, he's going to get the victory. You know, but he does think he's better than what he really is. You can become champion, but can you actually defend it? And he's got zero wins against the top five. Actually, I take that back. He's got one over now, Sean, Sean O'Smelly. You know, so what, 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 what am I trying to say here? Sean's perfect for this dude. So here we have it. You know, let, let's go to the punch stats. Strikes landed per minute, 7.25 to 4.37. Strikes absorbed, which is uh, which is defensively or the ability to be able to get hit. Sean is on the lead there. Striking ac accuracy, 61 to 50. Uh, submission average, we give it to Cheeto. Again, this is where I think the key is. And then takedown defense. It's, it's, it's both uh, 62 to 70, 70%. You know, I mean, th I mean, this fight right here, it's uh, to me, it's when I look at this fight, I'm just like, man, I cannot believe that Cheeto is about to become champion. I really can't. You know, this is the difference between Olympic sports where you got to compete against the best and go through a whole bracket, not knowing who the hell you're going to fight to really call yourself the best. But because this guy you know, wants the easiest fight in, the, in, in all of top 10, he's going to have to pick a guy like Cheeto. He's going to have to pick a guy he's been there before. You know, he, he believes that he has chances. He's got that chip on his shoulder. And I think for that reason, more likely they might give it to a guy like, like Cheeto Vera. You know, but that being said, I do believe that this man, because of his striking ability and because he's not going to lunge in like Aljo and because he, there's more importantly, the key for me, the reason why I believe that Cheeto Vera is going to beat a guy like Sean O'Malley is because of the endurance and the actual heart. Everything that he was talking about, him and Corey Sanhagen, which by the way, Michael, my producer, ended up buying me that meal because he did. He he was going for he was going for Cheeto. I'm like, there's there's no way. Sanhagen was just too technical, too many angles, too many movements. And then obviously we all saw the fight. I don't know how it was split decision, but I think this fight is really tailor made for somebody like Cheeto Vera. The simple fact that you keep your hands up. You don't react to a lot of the stuff and you just bring the fight to a guy like that who's never gone five rounds. At least you've gone five rounds. At least you've trained for more five rounds. You, I can easily see Cheeto Vera by stoppage, maybe within the fourth or fifth round. Mark my words. So for that reason, as much as I don't want to, I got to go right here. A long to go with, with, uh, with the pussycat tattoo on the back of your head. I'm going to go ahead and put some, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and put some freaking, uh, some pussycat uh, ears. But for that reason, Ronald Myth Donald, AKA, where's that 6'9 tattoo? Where's that 6'9? Six 6'9, nine? Six nine. put 6'8, or whatever. I'm gonna have to go with none other than Cheeto Vera. Again, guys, thank you guys for watching. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, AKA triple c and you guys just watch that episode of tell the tape you know whenever you guys want to indulge this is brought to you by our sponsor that's right cookie co whenever you guys want to indulge whenever you guys have a sweet tooth you guys love cookies and cream you guys like uh peanut, peanut butter swirl guys you guys make sure to go to cookieco.com and find the closest store near you once again you guys just watched uh tell the tape and we are